नमस्कार रविंद्र बोंद्रे यूट्यूब चैनल वाल मी सहर्ष स्वागत करता है ये आधी अपन एक चैप्टर यूट्यूब वपलोड के होता अपन तला भरभर प्रतिशत दिल्ला है तो आज आप सुरू करना आहोत चैप्टर नंबर टू लाइफ प्रोसेस इन लिविंग ऑर्गैनिजम्स पार्ट वन सद्या आता कोरोना संक्रमण सुरूच है जवपास पांच महीने जाए अपन घरी आहोत आ सद्या तरी परिस्थिति सुधराय का लक्ष दिस नहीं आ घरी अभ्यास करना अपरिहार्य है आम चैनल मध्यम आम्मी विज्ञान दोन हा विषय शिक शिकवाय तुम्हारा प्रयत्न करता आहो अपने जर आवड़ा तो अपन तला लाइक करा सब्सक्राइब करा सो उशा स्टार्ट टूडे लाइफ प्रोसेसेस इन लिविंग ऑर्गैनिजम्स पार्ट वन एंड इन दैट सब यूनिट लिविंग ऑर्गैनिजम्स एंड लाइफ प्रोसेसेस सो लाइफ प्रोसेसेस वे ऑफ सीन लाइफ प्रोसेसेस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ लाइफ प्रोसेसेस सम क्वेश्चंस आर आस इन द बुक फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन से द क्वेश्चंस एंड देन वी शुड स्टडी अबाउट लिविंग ऑर्गैनिजम्स एंड लाइफ प्रोसेसेस द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अंडर कैन यू रिकॉल इज हाउ आर the food stuffs and their nutrients contents useful for the body food stuffs we eat different foods daily all these are called as food stuffs and their nutrients the nut there are there are about five types of nutrients all of you know these are carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals so these minerals or all these types of nutrients we take or use daily via food and they are useful for production of energy and also for the development of the body our for our health and for our development of the body these essential nutrients are essential these food stuffs are essential and hence these food stuffs and uh, they contain nutrients and these nutrients they are oxidized in the body and they produce energy and by using this energy our growth and development takes place so that is about first question then the second question what is the importance of balanced diet in our body so balanced diet balanced diet वॉट इज बैलेंस डाइट अपन संतुलित आहार सो बैलेंस डाइट इज दैट डाइट दैट कंटेन्स ऑल द न्यूट्रिय ऑफ फूड स्टप्स इन एप्रोप्रिएट अमाउंट सगले घटक जे अन्ना चाहिए योग्य प्रमाण आती तो डाइट इज कॉल्ड अ बैलेंस डाइट एंड इफ वी यूज बैलेंस डाइट then what happens all the nutrients we get because no one food contains all nutrients lahan pani lahan palala bhup astat 6 mahina parant to tyachi bhuk kami aste and what happens all the nutrients are present in the milk but up to 6 month after that what happens as the child grows uh, his hunger increases भूक वाड़ी का होता मग वी गिव अनदर टाइप ऑफ फूड सो नो वन फूड इज कंटेन्स ऑल द टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिय एंड हेन्स वे हू टेक डिफरंट टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिय एंड हेन्स ई डिफरंट टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिय आर यूज इन एप्रोप्रिएट अमाउंट दैट इज कॉल्ड अ बैलेंस डाइट एंड हेन्स विथ द हेल्प ऑफ बैलेंस डाइट आवर हेल्थ इज मेन्टेन our development of the body growth and development of the body takes place then the third question which are different functions are performed by muscles in the body means functions of muscles there are three types of muscles the first type of muscle is called voluntary muscle second is called 
कि इनवॉलेंटरी मसल एंड थर्ड वन इज कॉल्ड कार्डियक मसल देन व्हाट आर वॉलेंटरी मसल्स वॉलेंटरी मींस ऐच्छिक ज्याला म्हणतो आपण द मसल्स व्हिच आर अंडर आवर कंट्रोल आर कॉल्ड एज वॉलेंटरी मसल्स देन सेकंड इन वॉलेंटरी द मसल्स व्हिच आर नॉट अंडर आवर कंट्रोल they are called as involuntary muscles and the third cardiac the muscles that control the functioning of heart is called cardiac muscles so these are the functions cardiac means related to heart so cardiac means related to heart means hrudaya sambandhi so they control on the functioning of heart so these are three types of muscles and their functions so one under our will second and which is not under our will and third which control on the functioning of heart so these are three types of muscles fourth one what is the importance of digestive juices in digestive system the importance of digestive juices in digestive system now stomach and intestine this contains digestive juices intestine contains intestinal juices and stomach contains digestive juices these juices are they contain what is called enzyme these juices are rich with enzymes and all the enzymes are catalyst then what is catalyst catalyst are the substances which enhance the rate of reaction without actually taking part in it mhanje pratyaksha bhag get nahi pan reaction cha rate vadhata they are called as catalyst and these enzymes are catalyst and they are present in the digestive juices so when food enters in this stomach and their intestine they increase the rate of digestion and second function in stomach the ph of is maintained it is acidic means below 7 it is below 7 and so in acidic medium food is digested when the food enters in next part that is intestine small intestine then the ph of intestine is basic or it is more than 7 and hence what happens food is digested so that is all about the digestive juices then next question which system is in action for removal of waste materials produced in human body again listen which system is in action for removal of waste materials produced in human body so the removal of waste material from the body is called ejection or excretion removal of waste material from the body is called ejection or excretion and hence system is called excretory system so the the answer is excretory system next question and the last question sorry sixth question what is the role of circulatory system in energy production the role of circulatory system in energy production what is circulation circulation of blood takes place by circulatory system means circulatory system circulate blood throughout the body from heart to body and body to heart that is called circulation now when the circulation of blood takes place along with this oxygen enter in that blood and also we ingest the food that food is uh, digested by 
different parts the first part is here uh, second second part is esophagus third part is our stomach fourth part is small intestine and so partially food is digested and then it becomes soluble and then it is carried by blood so at a time blood carries the digested food and also oxygen and it is carried to each and every cell there the food is oxidized by oxygen to form energy and this energy is stored in the mitochondria and hence each cell contains numerous mitochondria and then this energy is used for our growth and development of our body so that is all about circulatory system and the last is how are the various processes occurring in human body controlled the various processes in human body are controlled by control and coordination by nervous system and chemical coordination nervous system and chemical coordination one system is fast nervous system the response given by nervous system is very fast and the response given by chemical coordination is slow but they are in control and coordination and hence they control all the uh, processes occurring in human body so these are all the questions which were asked in can you recall now we shall see living organisms and life processes the first part of the chapter now various systems are present in our body or we shall see we shall say various organs are present in our body these organs combine to form organ system we have seen one system just now called circulatory system just we have seen nervous system then respiratory system we have also seen digestive system these are different systems which work in our body and with coordination control and coordination and different life processes are also takes place in our body for example respiration for example growth for example photosynthesis and these life processes are also they are also in coordination with each other now all for all this these all systems they work with coordination and less or more similar in all organisms along with human beings so the coordination is same in all organisms now the next part for this to to run all these systems with coordination they require energy and what is the source of energy just we have seen can you recall this energy we get from a fuel for example petrol and diesel these are the fuel for the vehicles by which the energy is pumped and they can run so in the same manner our body also require fuel to pump energy and our fuel is food and this food contains nutrients as we have seen six types of five types of nutrients they are called as carbohydrate then second protein then third fats fourth 
vitamin and oil type is fifth type is mineral so these are five types of nutrients which are present in the food and this we these types of nutrients we get not from a single food but by different foods and along of this which is the main food stuff the main food stuff is carbohydrate why carbohydrate why not others all from all food stuffs we get energy but carbohydrates are the food stuffs which are present in large quantity all over the world for example all types of cereals rice wheat jowar bajra millet all these are different types of cereals and they are used in different countries in a uh, india we use rice all over the india then wheat jowar bajra these are millets these are used so cereals then it is also present in milk carbohydrates are present in all types of cereals and hence we always use cereals in our food bring your complete plate your eating plate in front of you and imagine which first food stuff we eat in large amount chapati or bakri in uh, south india if you go then rice these are the food items which are used on large scale and why because they contains they are present because they are available on large scale and with low cost and hence they are used on large scale cereals all types of cereals then milk then sweet meat these are some of the sources then fruits then vegetables potato sweet potato all these are sources of carbohydrates then when now green plants they are autotrophs all of you what are autotrophs autotrophs are the organisms which can prepare their own food with the help of a process called photosynthesis and all green plants they are autotrophs so they prepare their own food with the help of sunlight and that food is stored is used by them but not all food is prepared by them is used and hence remaining food is stored in different parts of the plant and these parts are leaves we eat spinach we eat fenugreek and this spinach and fenugreek means palak and methi they are their leaves they are rich with food and hence we eat their leaves in spices then they are also stored in fruits and hence uh, we use many fruits of the plants for preparation of spices then third part is stem tubers so these are different parts of the plants where food is stored and these parts are used by the animals and then from them they prepare their energy and hence both are interdependent autotrophs and heterotrophs uh, then we have seen the sources of carbohydrate carbohydrates are abundantly present all over the world and they are they are the main source of energy for all living organisms so we have seen their sources cereals are the main sources we have seen example fruits sweet meat 
then potato, then uh, vegetables. These are all the sources of carbohydrates. When we when we consume one gram of carbohydrate, at that time we get four kilo calories of energy. Listen again. When we use when we consume one gram of carbohydrate, a gram carbohydrate of under the calorie. And then we get four kilo calories of energy, and hence carbohydrates are widely used as the main source of energy. Then a question is asked: Can you recall again what is respiration, and how does it occur? Respiration is one of the life processes. All of you know. So respiration is the assimilation of food to prepare energy i can listen the definition simple definition assimilation of food to generate energy is called respiration and this respiration takes place in two ways one way before that we shall see one diagram a diagram is asked on page number Thirteen. This diagram. The diagram is drawn on this paper. Now this is the diagram. Human respiratory system. A uh, human body is shown and different organs are there. You have to label the diagram. A question can be asked like this. So there are brackets are given or squares are given. and these are blank you have to write the names in the brackets so the first all you can see this is the nose then second mouth then third there is a pair of lungs that is what is this lung on the right side here there are two parts uh, here is uh, there is no bracket here but this is larynx then on right side trachea then here this is uh, lung here on this left side here is bronchi two branches are formed and they enter in the lungs bronchi and here is a lung then the lungs are place both the lungs are placed on a particular part like this so oh, this is the lung this is the second and both are placed on such a type this is called diaphragm this is called diaphragm so this is diaphragm so these are different parts i can listen mouth nose then bronchi and here mouth nose then larynx and bronchi on the right side here trachea lung and what is called diaphragm and here inside this a uh, lung are present large number of numerous alveoli this alveoli are shown here this looks like the branches of what is gross of what is called the wine grapes grape wine grape wine sa guchh kasa asto tya prabhav and these are called alveoli which were actual exchange of gases takes place means oxygen enter inside this and in return carbon dioxide is expelled so this is the part of bronchi so these are different parts of human respiratory system and hence these are all respiratory organs and these organs combine to form the respiratory system which are the organ nose then larynx then trachea pair of lungs 
then inside are present what is called the alveoli so these all combine together to form a human respiratory system now we have seen the definition of respiration the assimilation of food with the release of energy is called respiration and this respiration is of two types what is called external or it carried on two levels the respiration is carried on two levels the first level is external level also called breathing and second is cellular level so there are two levels of respiration external level called breathing means only intake of oxygen or exchange of gases exchange of gases from outside and from outside and they enter in the body and then in return carbon dioxide is formed so this exchange of gases is called breathing it means the oxygen along with air is inhaled and in return we release carbon dioxide so that is called breathing or external respiration then cellular level the respiration which occur at cell level means actual exchange of gases and it this actual exchange of gas takes place where in alveoli means here now the oxygen from the air is removed and this oxygen is absorbed by the alveoli and in return they expel carbon dioxide and hence we expel the remaining air along with carbon dioxide we intake air along with oxygen and we exhale air along with carbon dioxide so here actual what happens action takes place in alveoli and here oxygen enter in the blood and here with the help of hemoglobin this oxygen is carried to each and every cell of the body along with digested food and then the oxidation of food takes place in what is called the cell and here the energy is formed and this energy is in the form of atp called as adenosine right phosphate you have heard the name adenosine atp adenosine right phosphate so energy is formed in our body in each and every cell by the oxidation of food with the help of oxygen in the form of atp and these atp is are stored in mitochondria and hence each and every cell contains 2 to 5 or many mitochondria and in each mitochondria energy is stored and this stored energy we utilize whenever required for our growth and development so that is all about respiration and its time then some questions are asked under the heading on page number 13 can you tell the first question is how many atoms of carbon hydrogen and oxygen how many atoms of carbon hydrogen and oxygen are respectively present in a molecule of glucose now what is glucose glucose is a simple form of carbohydrate and this glucose contains six molecules of carbon 12 molecules of hydrogen and six molecules of oxygen and hence the formula of glucose is c6h12o6 where the ratio of oxygen and carbon is 2 is to 1 6 1 6 2 
H2 like in water H2 so that is glucose all about glucose so second second question which types of chemical bonds are present between all these atoms now carbon hydrogen and oxygen all are bonded with a type of bond and that bond is called covalent bond that is called covalent bond you have seen the types of bond ionic bond covalent bond and the difference in science one so that is covalent bond the third question in terms of chemistry what happens actually when the molecule is oxidized for example now this glucose when the glucose is oxidized we shall say example CH6H12O6 when it oxidizes then what happens it gain oxygen this glucose gain oxygen or it lose electron or it lose electron so whenever a molecule gain oxygen it gain oxygen or it lose electron so two methods are formed either it what the first is it gain oxygen and second it lose electrons so these are questions under the heading can you tell so carbohydrate we have seen is the main form of energy in our body and simple form of carbohydrate is glucose the formula of glucose we have seen c6h12o6 which contains six molecules of carbon 12 molecules of hydrogen and six molecules of oxygen now this glucose is utilized by our body by two ways so this glucose is oxidized either in presence of oxygen or in absence of oxygen then in presence of oxygen how and in absence of oxygen how so the respiration with the help of oxygen there are two types of respiration respiration with the help of oxygen is called aerobic respiration again see definition the respiration with the help of oxygen is called aerobic respiration and the respiration in absence of oxygen is called aerobic respiration so there are two methods of oxidation of glucose aerobic respiration means by use of oxygen and anaerobic respiration without use of oxygen so these are two methods now we have to see aerobic respiration so for aerobic respiration there are three steps we shall see only the names of steps the first step for aerobic respiration is glycolysis second step is pca cycle and third step is emp pathway or electron transport system electron transport system now this steps of aero these are the steps of aerobic respiration and these steps we shall see tomorrow now there are some questions for your homework you have to write the answers of these questions the first question is which nutrients are used on large scale i have told the answer why which nutrients are used on large scale and why 
second question is how much energy is obtained through carbohydrate we have seen when we consume one gram of carbohydrate then third one is what is respiration we have seen the definition of respiration and fourth is what are nutrients we have seen the examples of five nutrients so these are the questions for today's part that is living organisms and life processes so that all for today's session if watch this video observe this video and again observe your book and if you like this video then like it and subscribe it thanks